Hello guys, <clears throat> welcome to Co Academy. Guys, in this video, we will talk about a summary of the product life cycle and what are what objectives does companies pursue at, at each stage of the product life cycle and then how companies adjust their marketing mix that is the combination of product price placement and distribution at each stage of the product life cycle so talking about the characteristics of each stage so remember that product life cycle consists of four stages that is introduction stage growth stage maturity stage and decline stage now before we talk about the marketing strategies at each stage first we need to know what are the characteristics of sales costs profits customers and competitors at each of the four stages so at introductory stage at introduction introductory stage of the product life cycle the sales are low okay because the product product has just been launched uh, and when the product moves to the growth stage of course the sales are rapidly rising and at maturity stage the sales uh, st the sales reach the peak okay now it depends for how long will the maturity period continue okay it depends from product to product it depends from industry to industry okay so it depends okay maturity stage can last from few months to many years okay for example if we talk about uh, uh, pepsi okay or coca cola they have been at the maturity stage for many many years okay they have somehow managed their product life cycle in such a way that their demand has not fallen okay their products have not have not vanished from the markets okay so their their sales have, have not their their product has not entered the decline stage as yet and for the foreseeable future we don't see that you know pepsi and coke they will disappear from the market so after maturity stage comes the decline stage of a typical product uh, in which the sales start start to decline now talking about the cost profile at each stage so at introduction stage the the costs are highest per customer because you know sales are less but, but uh, the fixed costs which you have to incur for example if you are a if you have a factory and, and that is making different products so regardless of the demand in the market for your product you will have to incur certain costs for example you will have to pay the rent of the factory and when you start the machine you have to have you have to pay some expenses even if the machine is not operating at full capacity so the at the introduction stage since the turnover is low sales are low the cost per customer is the highest okay remember i'm not talking about total cost here total cost might will not be highest okay total cost of course will vary with the increase in the volume but the company will suffer losses because cost per customer will be higher due to the presence of fixed costs at growth stage the average cost per customer you it, it usually it usually falls relatively to intro, relative to the introduction stage and then at maturity stage the cost per customer is very low and at decline stage also the cost is low because uh, when the sales are down uh, variable costs are also reduced okay but uh, uh, average cost but the cost per customer is lowest at the majority stage okay so talking about profits at introductory stage the profits are negative that is the the product faces the product faces losses because you are you are uh, spending huge amount on on advertisement whereas and you are also, you have also invested in your various distribution channels okay but the sales are not that high so you are suffering losses and in the growth stage of course the profits starts to rise and the maturity stage experiences the highest profits and decline stage of course it experiences declining profits talking about customers so that in, in, in the in the introduction stage the innovators you know customers are categorized into four four types okay some are innovators some are early adopters some are some are middle majority and some are laggards so these categorization are based upon based on the on the on the relative time frame in in which the customers adopt the new product so innovators are one who adopt the new product fairly quickly so introduction stage uh, is characterized by innovative customers growth by early adopters maturity by middle majority customers and decision decline stage by laggards laggards are those who who opt for a product in the uh, at the last talking about competitors in the introduction stage of course competitors are few because because it's a new market and uh, relatively in all the businesses are making losses and as as growth as the business as the 
business grows of course many people many people from other other uh, other companies they see that okay this sector is profitable so competitors start coming in at maturity stage uh, the competitors are stable in number but they begin to decline because at maturity stage when there are many competitors then profit of each of the competitors starts to erode okay because there is intense competition so at the decline stage of course all the all the you know products and businesses they they start to shift their resources from one sector to another because that sector is no more profitable so what should be the marketing objectives at each stage okay so at the introduction stage the marketing objectives are to create product awareness and trial since the product is new to the market you have to convey to the customers about the benefits of the product features of the product so and you you need to make sure that the customers at least give your product a trial okay i mean whether they come back and make repeated purchases or not that is a separate issue but first you need to make sure that they at least give it a try at the growth stage of course the marketing objectives are to maximize the market share okay since your sales are now increasing you would want that you capture the majority of the market share majority of the customers buy your product and not the competitors at the maturity stage uh, the marketing objectives are to maximize profit while defending market share okay since at maturity stage there are many competitors vying for the vying for the same size of the pie and pie being the many customers so you have to defend your market share of course also of course you do this by by tweaking the product by adjusting the price and the lastly in the decline stage the objectives are to reduce expenditure and milk the brand because you know that the brand is going to die away anyway so you start cutting down your costs and you try to make sure that your costs are minimal whereas you try to milk the product and uh, most you can so talking about the product uh, uh, marketing mix that is product price per promotion and placement distrib and distribution decisions what strategies do do companies need to follow at each stage of the product life cycle first we will talk about the product so at the talk in at the introduction stage companies offer a basic product okay you know the core uh, core uh, you know value satisfying core need satisfying aspect of the product that is what the company serve okay Uh, but when when the at the growth stage companies offer product extension services and warranty because now the company knows that many competitors are also entering the market so need to dif they, so they need to differentiate themselves if they want to keep their product if they want to keep customers coming back and buy your product so they might introduce for example warranty that within two year, you you have this two year warranty that if anything happens to the product then you can come back and 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 take a replacement product from us at the maturity maturity stage companies you know smart companies they they start to diversify brands and models okay they know that ultimately uh, the, all the products will face the decline stage so they start preparing for the decline stage and they try to diversify their product for example if it's coke then they will they will come up with diet coke okay or any other brand uh, so they will they'll diversify their product and of course they, at the decline stage companies start to phase out okay because they know that uh, they have tweaked the product they have uh, they have essentially done everything to keep the product going but of course now the product might not be feasible and it might not be profitable to carry on with the same product so they might you know take the product out of the market and invest their resources somewhere else so talking about the pricing strategy at each phase of the product life cycle at the introduction stage remember costs are very important to the company because companies incurring costs but it is not uh, receiving the sales as expected okay because initially not many customers buy your product so companies what pricing the pricing strategy is to use cost plus price that is you ascertain your cost for example if if the if it if an item costs you 10 dollars per item then you will somehow uh, uh, try to charge somewhere above 10 okay it it will not be very much higher than 10 because of course right now the comp you you haven't uh, commanded brand loyalty customers haven't tried your product but of course you will try to make sure that you at least cover the costs okay uh, so at the growth stage you you charge the price to penetrate the market okay you do not charge excessive prices at this stage also because since there are few competitors right now you try to capture as much market share as you can because you know that once you have captured the market and you have earned the brand loyalty then you get charge the prices you want okay and then you will of course milk the product but at the growth stage you don't charge excessive prices so at the maturity stage you you charge prices to match or beat competitors okay 
so if you have commanded a brand loyalty then you charge the prices uh, uh, on based on the value customers place for you at your products okay so you see what competitors are charging and then you see that if customers value your product more than the competitors then you charge more price at the decline stage of course you cut the prices because you feel like you feel like customers are moving away from the product so let's let's keep them as long as they are going and by charging a reduced prices you know uh, you would see that of course many companies offer uh, discounts and you know, discounts and you know uh, just to dis just to dispose of their stocks okay because they know that this this uh, let's suppose talking about the garment clothing industry companies know that this fashion would be this this particular a particular fashion of the apparel would be out of fashion in the next season so cut the prices make the customers buy as much stock as they can okay talking about distribution at the introduction stage companies build selective distribution because they know they know that the demand for the product will not be very high so they can't just you know set up distributors and retailers at each and every location okay they will selectively uh, build centralized warehouses and from there they will supply their products because their demand is low whereas at the growth stage companies build intensive distribution they will probably have go downs and warehouses at each locality and they will have multiple retailers in each locality because they know that demand will be high and they need to make sure that their products are easily available accessible to the customers uh in in maturity stage companies uh, go with the same strategy that is to build intensive distribution whereas at decline stage companies go selective they phase out unprofitable outlets so in a what one particular locality let's suppose if your product is no more you know uh, no more uh, in demand uh, like other uh, as in other zones or uh, or in other localities then you start to phase out your product from those localities because it 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 it, it will result in losses talking about advertising at the introduction stage uh, uh, the ma marketers build product product awareness among early adopters and dealers okay so early early adopters as we saw are those those segment of consumer markets who 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 love to try new products so what you will do is that you will try to create awareness and pitch your product to those customers you will of course you will of course contact different dealers who will sell your products further so advertising expense is greatest at the introduction stage okay then uh, in the growth stage the companies build awareness and interest in the mass market so once you have these early adopters like different celebrities uh, you know uh, who start to wearing your your uh, who start to let's suppose wear your dresses you are a boutique and then you then you go to mass market okay you 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 start campaigning in the media mainstream media so that Uh, mass market they see your product and they start using it and that uh, at the maturity stage you stress brand differences and benefits because now there are many competitors who are offering almost similar products so you, you need to stress brand differences in your in your advertisement okay you need to stress that why your product is different why competitors should why customers should buy your product and not customers at the decline stage the adverti advertisement is reduced to level needed to retain hardcore loyals so at the decline stage you know that customers will abandon the product but you will uh, you will you know you, you keep this advertising selected uh, to your hardcore loyal customers so, so that they keep buying your products okay talking about sales promotion at the introduction stage marketers use heavy sales promotion to entice trial so you want people to try your products okay at the growth stage sales promotion is reduced to take advantage of heavy consumer demand so you not give like free free products anymore because you know that demand is higher at the maturity stage you increase sales promotion to encourage brand switching so there are many brands in the market right now and you want to offer special sales promotion as for example special discounts for a limited period so that people at least try your product once and if they are satisfied then they will switch to your brand at the decline stage you reduce the sales promotion to minimal level okay because now the product is is no longer needed in the market no longer needed by the customers so you don't spend extra okay uh, you don't you don't give unnecessary discounts so i hope this video clarified your concept as to what are the stages in the product life cycle what are the characteristics with regards to sale costs profits customers and competitors at each stage of the product life cycle what are the aims of the marketers at each stage of the product life cycle and how the marketing mix is changed at each stage of the product life cycle thanks for watching do subscribe